Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hello. Welcome to B-17 Flying Fortress, the Mighty Eighth. A awesome game that uh, for years I've wanted to show on the channel, but wasn't able to due to technical reasons, and we almost weren't able to today on Twitch for technical reasons, but I've now sorted those technical reasons. Um, most of them were resolution related, as you can see. I've got the actual game in on the left here. Oh, and I've, I've left it alone so long that it's actually playing the credits. I'll let that go, I suppose. Um... And I've got a little sidebar at the right with the chat and where the alerts will pop up and stuff. A nice cloud background, because I felt that was appropriate. Anyway, see, look, they're being so polite. They're saying hello to the YouTube people. Aren't they lovely? Anyway, B-17, Flying Fortress, the Mighty Eighth, and I'm going to get out of that because that's really distracting. <laughs> um is a, I guess technically we could call it a flight sim, but it's really much more than just a flight sim. It is the closest thing I could compare it to nowadays would be Bomber Crew, but it's far more in-depth and far more of a simulator. It's far more realistic than Bomber Crew, but the pre basic premise is the same, i.e. you control the crew of a B-17 Flying Fortress bomber over Europe during World War II, and the objective is basically just to hit your bombing targets and survive, try not to be shot down by enemy fighters, enemy flak, or crash land, or anything like that. Survive as long as you can. And there's two ways to play it, actually. There's a way to play it where you play with a single crew, a single bomber as part of a squadron, and there's actually a squadron commander campaign you can do where you're actually the squadron commander, whereas in you plan out the missions yourself and lead the squadron into, into the... Uh, into battle, basically. Um, that's a little advanced for me, though, because I don't remember enough about the game to remember how squadron commander campaigns work. So we're just going to be doing a bog-standard historical campaign in this one where we have a single bomber with a crew and we do our best to not, not die horribly, basically, is the idea. Um, but this game's awesome. It's really cool. Uh, it, is, it, was re it was released in 2000... And, well, no, 2000, in the year 2000. 13th of December 2000. Developed by Wayward Design, published by Microprose, uh, who published a whole bunch of awesome games back in the day. Um, it's actually a sequel to the 1992 game, B-17 Flying Fortress World War II Bombers in Action, that was out on the Amiga, I believe. Um, and uh, this game's really crying out for a remake, if you ask me, because no one's really done anything like it since. I, I, like I said, Bomber Crew is the closest anyone got, but Bomber Crew, for my, my taste, is a little bit too gamey and a little bit too close to FTL, whereas this is more of a flight simulator. Um, and it's awesome. It's really good, and I hope you guys enjoy watching it today. I thought I'd showcase this since I became aware that it actually does work on Windows 10 now if you buy it from GOG. Uh, yeah. Yeah, apparently, apparently a remake actually has been announced by Microprose. Um, all they've got to show for it, though, is some artwork and some 3D models and textures, and that's it, though. So who knows if it'll actually happen. But they claim that there is a remake of this in the works, called simply called The Mighty Eighth, which is going to have VR support, apparently, and stuff, so... I mean, we'll see what, what comes of that. But in the meantime, this is the best you can get. I'm afraid. So, right. I'm going to need my joystick for this. I don't need track IR, thank goodness. And you, I suppose you don't really need a joystick for this game either, actually. That's kind of the beauty of it. As you'll see as we get into it, you really don't need all the usual flight sim paraphernalia to play this game. Um, it's part of what makes it so unique. So, yeah, they, I believe they've been resurrected in some form, yes. They have been indeed resurrected. So, I mean, who knows what will come of it? I really have no idea, but hopefully good things will come of it. That's, 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 the, that's the best we can hope for anyway. So, we're going to do a new game. We're going to do a historical campaign. There's also the training missions, uh, a squadron campaign, and historical missions. The squadron campaign is the one I mentioned where you play as a squadron commander. Um, that's something I might tackle in the future, maybe as a series. Um, I, I, either on here or on YouTube. Um, but for now, I'm just going to do the historical campaign. So, uh, we get to choose. We are the 1st Bombardment Division, 8th Air Force. We can be the 401st Group, 306th Group, 381st, or the 92nd. Um, and say so the 401st are based at Deanthorpe, 306th are based at Thurley, 381st are based at Ridgewell, and the 92nd are based at Poddington. Now, I'm going to choose the 92nd, 
because Poddington is incredibly close to where I live. You can even see where I live on the map in this game. It's one of the few video games I've ever seen that has Kettering on the map. It's amazing. Uh, sadly, it doesn't have Grafton Underwood available in here, um, which is a shame, because Grafton Underwood's even closer. And that was a US bomber base in World War II as well. But Poddington's the best we can get. Um, so, we have a choice now of which squadron we want to be. The 325th, 326th, 327th, or 407th. we got a choice here, basically, of... It uh, doesn't really make a difference. It's just, like, the logo we get, effectively. Campaign starts well. Uh, we can change the date that we want to start at. Um, I see no reason not to start at the beginning. So if we... Hop on back to... Oh, I've missed it again. All the way back through. Come on. It was a 1943 start, and I want it. There it is. December 1st, 1943. Um, Dave doxed himself. Oh, don't be daft. Right. Uh, we can be the 326, 327, 407. Let's be the 327th with the T-Rex in honor of our Tomb Raider playthrough. Um, so, yeah. Let's be the 327th. And we are part of the 92nd Bombardment Group. Based at Poddington in December the 1st, 1943. And now we get to choose our nose art and the name of our plane. So you have a bunch to choose from here. Bunch of nose arts, because of course, World War II bomber cruisers, particularly the Americans, were famous for painting lots of artwork on the front of their planes. Quite frequently, very lewd artwork. <laughs> the games toned it down a bit, admittedly. Um, the crew, old mother B, baby boomer. I think these are all just made up ones. These aren't based on real bombers. Feather merchant, the ogres. Hell's a poppin'. Burrow, Thunder Chief, Froggy. I quite like Froggy, actually. Um, what I want, though, is... There he is, Big Bad Wolf. The name of our bomber is going to be Hungry Hector. And the reason for that is because my dog was called Hector. He didn't look completely unlike that. How come they haven't included the Memphis Bell, etc.? Nah, because these are all these are all made up ones, basically because uh, the other bombers in your squadron also have their own nose arts and their own names and stuff. So you will see as we as we as we play, you'll see other bombers with other nose arts on them and stuff. Hungry game. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Oh, chat's absolutely full of smart Alex today for some reason. So. Hungry Hector is the name of our bomber. And then we have our crew, which we can actually rename if we want to. The question is, what do we rename them to? We have subs in chat. Yeah, you have forename and surname. For each of them, so yeah, at least a Humphrey and a David. <laughs> Tell you what, in that case, uh, where who's our pilot? Right, our pilot will be David Crumpington. Wait, wait, no, no, David. That's the forename slot, idiot. Right, Crumpington. The co-pilot will be Humphrey Kuz oh God's sake. Oh, you've got to love that old game jank, haven't you? Return to previous screen. <laughs> David Crumpton, that's fixed it. There we go. Humphrey... Hughesland. Tom East wants to be one. All right, Tom, you're going to be our bomber bombardier. Tom East. 
Uh, we need a navigator. Who's got a good sense of direction? Who wants to volunteer for the dubious honor of being navigator? <laughs> the other left. <laughs> I think Doc called it first, so, uh, mm. yeah, yeah, Doc called it first. Doctor Fat is our navigator. Uh, our top turret gunner slash engineer. Crooked shades. Oh, 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 edit, yeah, done. Oh, oh for God's sake. Right. I haven't actually bothered to rename the crew before, so I hadn't no I had no idea it was this janky this screen, but hey. There we go, shades. Next up, our radio operator. Who's good with a telephone? Potomsium wants to be a tail gunner. Uh how should I what do you what's your surname gonna be, Potomsium? If you're gonna be tail gunner. We get you can radio. Nine fourteen can shoots. All right, nine fourteen. You have the incredibly dubious honor of being the bull turret gunner. So nine fourteen. Topsium Carter then is our tail gunner. We're watching you. Doctor Fat, thank you very much for the Twitch sub. Oh wait, no, Spaghetti gifted him a Twitch sub. Well, thanks for that, Spaghetti. Enjoy your trunk birdie modes. All right, uh, radio operator. Who's going to be our radio operator? Spaghetti says you can radio. Spaghetti, what's your what's your surname going to be? Hobo Joe, there's absolutely a place for you, sir. Spaghetti pain. There we go. Uh, you can be our left waist gunner. Hobo Joe. And our right waist gunner, our final position. Gunners look kind of shook, yeah, particularly this guy. Look at him. <laughs> the, other, the only one we've got left now is right waist gunner. That's the only one that's left. Everyone else is taken. We do have a bombardier already, Blackwater, but you can be a right waist gunner if you like. Positions will open up when the original people die. This is a good point. I though I don't know if we can actually rename people as we go on. That might be a squadron campaign feature, I'm not sure. Alright, Blackwater. Welcome aboard, you're now a waste gunner. There you go. Just some early 2000s portrait jank. <laughs> okay, so we have our bombardier, Tom East, our navigator, Dr. Fat. Our pilots are, of course, David Crumpington and Humphrey Kuzland. Our top turret, turret gunner slash engineer is Crooked Shades. Our radio operator is Spaghetti. Our bull turret gunner is 914. Our left waist gunner is Hobo Joe. Our right waist gunner is Blackwater. And our tail gunner is Potomsium. Here we go! So, 
We're now in the HQ building. Uh, the squadron commander's office and the operations room is both off limits because we're not doing a squadron campaign. But we have the bomber commander's office, we have the briefing room. So let's go to the bomber commander's office. We have a few things in here. The medical file for when people get injured. We have the crew information file, we have the bomber information file. The out tray, the in tray, and we can inspect the bomber outside. Let's go do that first. Hungry Hector. There it is in all its beauty. VPH H for Hector, I guess. That's a happy coincidence, actually. And there's the nose art. Lovely. It's a low res beauty, isn't it? Yes. The finest graphics 2000. December 13th, 2000 had available. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, though, uh, for, for a game released in 2000, it has a fantastic draw distance. You'll see when we get up in the air. Send our greetings to Berlin, indeed. You really love the menu system in this? Yes, I like it too. It's, it's big on immersion, is this game. I, I really like that. Dude, that was, it was 21 years ago, to be fair. It was 21 years ago. Like The only other game I can think of off the top of my head that also came out in 2000 was Deus Ex. And I think Deus Ex was maybe a little bit prettier than this, but not by much. How did this game graphically compare to Flight Simulator at the time? Probably about on par, I would say, roughly speaking. Maybe slightly better uh, 3D cockpits, actually. Because I think the most recent flight sim at the time from Microsoft was uh, like Combat Flight Simulator 2. So yeah, yeah, about the same, I would say, on par. I think I remember, when I played this back in the day, I think I remember being quite impressed with the graphics. So anyway, um, escape. Right, crew management file. Let's have a little look in here. Hungry Hector, serial number 4231033. Uh, and then East Fat, Crumpington, Kuzlan, Shades, Payne, 14, Joe, Water, and Carter. <laughs> and there's, this is all their crew assignments currently. We can actually change their initial assignments if we want to through here. And as you, you've got little little dash marks where actually it's available to do it because some crew members will be qualified to do things when others won't. You can have a look at the, all of you guys with your skills. Uh, Tom, apparently your morale is low. Your gunnery is average. Your piloting is poor. Your bomb aiming is above average. Your navigation is below average. Your first aid and technical are both average. In fact, let's let's leave this because it's an easier way to view this. Let's go back to the airbase, back to the bomber commander's office. Let's go to crew information file. Here we go. You get a bit more information here. So, Tom, let's see. Your date of birth was apparently the uh, the 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 fourth of the eighth, nineteen seventeen. You are married. You're assigned to Hungry Hector. You're a bombardier. Uh, which is why your bomb aiming is above average and everything else is not very good. Your status is active, your morale is low. No medals or missions, phone or injuries to date. Dr. Fat, you are single. You are a navigator. Your navigation is average. We'll have to improve that. Uh, your morale is also low. Uh, David Crumpington, he is married. Uh, he is the pilot. His piloting is above average, thank goodness. His technical's also above average as well, which is interesting. Um, morale is also below average. Humphrey is also married, apparently. Uh, his piloting is average. He's actually above average technical. He's a better mechanic than he is a pilot, oddly enough. His morale's above average as well. Oh, when that was that was Humphrey in a nutshell, to be fair. <laughs> A pig-headed determination to look, refuse to look facts in the face was, was Humphrey all over. Um, Cricket Jades, single, top turret gunner. Technical's above average, because you are the assigned like engineer for the aircraft. You are the, you are the mechanic guy. Um, everything else is not so great, though. Your gunnery's average, at the very least. And your morale is average. Spaghetti! 
Spaghetti. Spaghetti, spaghetti, our radio operator. Um, you're our average gunnery, no piloting skill at all. Uh, you're poor bomb aimer, a poor navigator, uh, average at first aid and average at technical. Mostly you just speak to people on the radio, to be fair. Uh, 914 is our ball turret gunner. Gunnery average, no skill in any of these, average first aid, poor technical. Hobo Joe is our left waist gunner. Average gunnery, none for everything else, below average for first aid and technical. Uh, morale average. Blackwater. 1912, you're old, quite old compared to everyone else. Single. Right waist gunner. Gunnery is below average. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right waist gunner has below average gunnery. Fantastic. No skill in any of these. Below average first aid and poor technical. Morale below average. Oh, God. Make a mental note. Don't, don't send Blackwater to do anything important in the bomber. Are their stats randomized? I believe so, yeah. Uh, Potomsium is apparently married. Born in 1915. Is the tail gunner. Average gunnery, no skill in these. Below average first aid and poor technical. Morale high, though. Fair enough. You'd have to be a bit mad to be the tail gunner, I suppose. Very good. So that's the crew. Bomber information fast. Probably nothing interesting in here right now. Mechanical status is A. No missions flown. No enemy aircraft kills. The serial number. No missions flown. The in tray. No one red mail. Out tray. No one red mail back out to the corridor and off to the briefing room for our first mission here we go let's have a look the mission briefing it is the 1st of december 1943 our primary target is brest harbor in france secondary target for today is brest u-boat base and there is no tertiary target our ordnance that's selected is six 500-pound general-purpose bombs and 1,200-pound incendiary bombs. Distance to farthest target is 766 miles. We have a fighter escort, which consists of one squadron of P-47s and a squadron of P-38s. Our primary target, Brest Harbor. Flak strength moderate, fighter strength minimal, priority is medium, damage currently is none. The place is completely undamaged. Nobody's bombed it before us. Um... Target intelligence. Brest Harbour is used to transport some materials and personnel important to the German war effort in that local area. Striking the port would disrupt communications and supply, as well as affecting local morale and support for the Germans. Secondary target is the U-boat base. Flak strength moderate, fire strength minimal, priority medium, no damage. Brest is one of the bases the German U-boats return to between war patrols. U-boats represent the biggest danger to Allied shipping and, the result, and result in tying up large numbers of ships as escort, uh, convoy escorts. No tertiary target. This concludes your target briefing. Please sign below to indicate that you have read and understood the above. There we go. Done. We can now have a look at the route map. Western coast of France. Yeah. Yes, exactly, Dr. Fert. You're bang on the money. So that's where we're going to be starting. Zoom this in a bit. Let the textures load in. Kettering! Look, there you go. Corby, Northampton. I've never seen these places on a map in a video game before. It's amazing. Uh, and there's Poddington. Right there. Grafton Underwood is actually around here somewhere. Um, but it's not on the map, and it's because it's not represented in the game for some reason. But hey, there you go. We're here at Poddington. And um, flight plan, which we can edit once we get in the air, if we want to. This flight plan, and I probably will. But at the minute, it consists of us taking off, heading down this way. Our first waypoint is here at 15,000 feet. Then we fly across this way. Then we turn right at the decision point, which is the point at which we decide whether we want to go for the secondary or the primary target. Then we go on in, we drop the bombs, and then we egress out this way, past the rally point, and then back all the way home is the idea. I may tweak this a little bit to get us a slightly better bomb run on the target, because if you have a look at this right now, we're kind of coming at it diagonally with the town behind the docks. And what we don't want to do as the US Army Air Force in this is try and bomb 
uh, civilian housing as much as we can. Um, unlike the British, the Americans in World War II quite admirably were dedicated to the idea of precision bombing only industrial and military targets and trying to avoid civilian casualties as much as possible. Um, so we want to not do that if we can at all help it. Uh, so we want to bomb the docks. We don't want to bomb, bomb the houses next to the docks if we can help it. So what might be a good idea to do is actually adjust our incoming trajectory in order to better avoid doing that. Unless you were Japanese, in which case tough shit. Yes, that's true, actually. I should say on the Western Front they made that decision. On the uh, in, in, on, in the Pacific, not so much. Um, right. So, but that's that's the gist of it, basically. That's what it kind of looks like. We uh, can I actually adjust this at all? Can I move these? No, I can't move them in this screen, but I can once we get in the air because we are the lead bomber, um, which means that we'll be leading the formation. Therefore, I can make changes to this if I want to. Uh, but that's the plan as it currently stands. We also have a reconnaissance film, so we can have a little preview of the target and see what we want to expect. Here it's coming up. So this is what the place looks like. You've got all these big buildings down the side here, and then you've got the... the whatever these are called out here on the sides. You've got some ships in there as well. We're probably going to be aiming for the actual... these, these buildings here, though, I imagine. Which um, are already quite close to some houses, so we, as I said, we might want to change the direction we come at the target from in order to avoid just, you know, plastering the whole neighbourhood with bombs. So, they really need to remake this game. I'm glad someone agrees. This game is awesome. All right, let me go back to the root map a minute because someone asked a question there. Right, these rings on the map, uh, are those AA sites? Yes. So basically, the, the general key for the map here, actually, you can zoom, if we zoom out all the way, I believe we can actually see it. Uh, here we go. Urban areas are marked in black, lakes are marked in blue, or lakes slash seas, rivers, forests, all this usual stuff, major roads, railways, allied air, uh, air base, fighter base, bomber base, Luftwaffe air bases are, are blue circles, light flak zones are pink circles, medium flak zones are red circles, and heavy flak zones are dark red circles. Uh, target location, front line, and fighter zones. So basically, essentially... These um, these rings, the red rings, those are flak areas. So if we go fly into these rings, we'll be getting shot at from the ground by anti-air. And the blue rings, these big blue ones, these are areas of high Luftwaffe fighter activity. So quite often what we're going to want to do is plan our route to avoid as much flak and enemy fighters as possible, judging by these rings on the map. So, there you go. Right. Start the mission. Let's go. So here we are on the ground. It's all the other bombers in the distance you can see there. Are on our, um, on the apron here, they call We're it. We're watching you. The hard stand. Scum. Irish Swede, thank you very much for the sub. Your grandfather said the highest flak area he ever encountered was over Ploesti, even more so than Berlin. Interesting. your grandfather fly B-17s then? Here we are, right. Uh, so, let's go have a look inside. I'll give you a little tour of the place before we get started here. Since I don't think anyone else is going to get started until we do. We sort of have the... We, we could give the order to begin the mission, basically. We just, just sat around having a few smokes before before we actually jump in the bomber and get started, really, effectively. Um, so, we go inside. We got the flight deck here. And you have a few views that you could go with this. Uh, you have the external view, which we just saw, the compartment view, which is what you're looking at right now, where you see the actual guys inside. The action view, where if I click on old David Crumpington here, we could go into this. This is like the, the point of view of the character in, in question, in this case, the pilot. Um, the co-pilot turns invisible when you're in the pilot seat or the co-pilot seat and vice versa for some reason. 
Uh, we can view things from Humphrey's perspective. Up here, this is you have all the crew on here, so we're currently... Ugh, it's a bit of a glitchy menu, though. It's David Crumpington. Humphrey, over on this side, we can switch to the co-pilot seat if we want to. And then if you go on the side here, you have the instrument view, which allows us to look down at the various stuff here. And if we switch back to Eld Crumpington, who I've just noticed actually does have a moustache, so excellent. Um, you can see the instruments and the buttons and stuff. Um, if we go back to the compartment view, and go down here, we can view the other compartments. So we can go down to the nose, which is where we've got Dr. Fat as our navigator. Tom East is our bombardier slash chin turret gunner, because he, he basically pulls double duty when you're in the front. You can be you aim the bombs and also you control the, the chin turret. There's also a cheek turret here, which isn't currently in, in use. Someone else, like, like Dr. Fat here, if, we, if, we're, if we're desperate, he can get up from his map and go man the cheek turret if we need him to. Uh, let's get back here. Here's the bomb bay, and you can just see over there Crooked Shades up on the top turret. But there's all the bombs. We have the radio operator's bit, which is where we've got Spaghetti on his radio. We'll come back to him in a minute. we got the waste, where we have Hobo Joe and Blackwater and 914 down there in the belly. And then we've got the tail which is where Potomsium's hanging out. Radio operator usually mans the cheek turret. Yeah. Um, he's probably the easiest choice because he's probably, I mean, apology spaghetti, but in a crisis, you're probably the least useful. So <laughs> it feels very cramped in there. It's probably because it was. Um, now then, we're all ready to go here pretty much. So. And here's all the shortcuts as well. So if we have a go, I'm going to take this opportunity to go over to Dr. Fat and check out the um, instrument view for him, which is his desk. And then we click on this here, map, and we get to the map view. So in the bottom right, you may have noticed this entire time, there's been a little computer symbol. And that basically means that whatever position we're looking at right now is under AI control. Um, by default, the entire bomber is run by the AI. And basically, the way this game works is you step in at any given time you want to, and you take over from the AI. So essentially what you can do is if you want to do an entire mission where the AI does everything, but you want to be you want to just man the guns and shoot down enemy airplanes, you could do that. The pilot will fly the plane, the bomb able will drop the bombs, all of that shit will be taken care of, from you, care of and you could just sit there playing Turret Gun Simulator 2000 if you want to. Alternatively, you can take over and do as much as you want or as little as you want. It's one of the things that makes this game really cool, in my opinion, is it's sort of the automation is there so that you can do the bits you're interested in and leave the computer to handle the rest. You're the patron deity of the crew that occasionally possesses a crew member to help out, yes. And yeah, so like, oh, unlike Bomber Crew, for example, um, the crew will actually, they have initiative of their own and they will do stuff um, without you telling them to. Luckily, you can adjust that in the settings, how much initiative you want them to have. So if you want to, as a challenge, just absolutely micromanage the fuck out of everything, you can. But I have them sit on maximum initiative so that they will actually go and do stuff important when, when, they, uh, when they have to. So, there we are at Poddington. Basically, the way this work works is we're going to take off. We're going to circle the airbase until all the other bombers have formed up on us. And then we're going to head out towards France over here. Now, what I have here is that if I turn it, if I hit the M key and turn off the AI management here and take manual control, which is when you've got the hand symbol, I can start messing about with things, which is exactly what I want to do. So... After we're reviewing the, the recon film, basically we want to bomb Brest Harbour without damaging all those civilian houses. So the way I think I'm going to do this is as follows. We're going to take the decision point and we're going to move it right out to here, just above Marley there. 
and we're going to take the initial points for both the targets, and we're going to put them over here. Kind of like that. So we're probably going to clip a little bit of flak on our way in, but that's not too bad. And hopefully, that will give us a better shot at taking out the entire docks because we're coming at it from the right angle and also avoiding any civilian casualties. I mean, they're going to be civilian casualties because there'll be civilians working at the docks, sadly, but what are you going to do? There's a war on. Uh, so let's move the rally points out here. So we're basically going to hit the target and then just carry straight on until we get out here over the sea. And then what I'm going to do is actually insert a couple, uh, like a waypoint or two here. There we go. To make this turn here a bit more shallow, because it's conceivable that when we come out over here, out from out, when we exit the flak field, some of our bombers might be quite badly damaged. And when the bombers are damaged, making a sharp turn is really difficult. We might have people crashing into each other and stuff. It would not be good. So we want to make the, shirt, the turn a bit shallow. So if we, I've moved another waypoint out over here. It's set at 30,000 feet. We don't want that, though. We want to put it back down to 15,000 because that's our bombing altitude for today. There we go. And uh, we should be okay with that, I think. In fact, it might be a good idea to just... Here we go. Save ourselves a bit of fuel and move that back like that. There we go. Uh, like so. Beautiful. There we are. And then we'll make our way all the way back to Poddington like that. Yeah, Flak was, must, have, must have been horrible because it's essentially a lottery, right? You've got to fly in a steady straight line for the so you can drop the bombs. You can't dodge, you can't weave, you can't do anything. you just got to sit there and hope you don't roll a natural one on the old D20 of real life. It's It must have been absolutely terrifying at least with enemy fighters you could feel like you were fighting back a bit right i think that's us more or less ready to go now once we get in the air there'll actually be a fuel calculation and they'll tell us on here when we look at the line on the map this will go from being dotted blue to being a solid green color and if the line turns to orange it means we won't have enough fuel and then i'll therefore i'll have to tweak it a bit but we should be fine in fact, I think I've saved us some fuel, really, with the, with the planning I've done here, rather than, more than anything else. So, let's go back to the external view, and I'm going to hit... Actually, no, let's go to the radio operator's view. Here we go. We're going to go in here. We're currently waiting to, bomb, waiting to begin the mission Bomb Rest Harbor. That's the logbook order book. Here we go. We want to begin the mission. So begin the mission. Oh, wait. AI control. I always forget. You've got to turn that off first. There we go. Start engines. There we go. Master switch on. Cow flaps. Open left. Open right. Ignition to both. Mixture auto rich. Now the thing will start up. The AI is doing this for us because I can't be asked. Things are happening, I know. Oh, it's his American cousin, JB. Don't worry about it. It's David Marmaduke Crumpington. He's his transatlantic cousin of the American Crumpingtons. Where is the bathroom? You should have gone before we left, Blackwater. <laughs> You'll have to wait until we open the Bombay doors over Brest. Then you can go relieve yourself. Flight Simmer and Management Sim, it's a little bit of both. That's what makes it cool. Taxi 
the runway. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and take control here so I can do the taxi myself. My own damn self. Set the parking brake for a second here. Uh, release. Release the tail wheel. And now we should be able to. Yeah, here we go. Now, I would do this from the pilot seat, but it's really hard. You can't really see much, and track IR doesn't work with this game, so I just have to kind of. All I have access to is these numpad keys that are really. That are not very helpful because it sort of automatically snaps back to the front. So I'm going to go back to the external view. Pull the taxi out. One of the other bombers look slightly on fire. No, it should be fine. be a little surprised if it was on fire already. Oh my god, what is he doing? Dude! What the fuck? Guys, what the F? The runway's here. This lunatic's overshot it completely. What is he doing? Uh, whatever. What are they like? Take that man's number. self centered and put the parking brake on uh, lock the tail wheel deploy our flaps for takeoff we go. And bring up the, uh, the, the uh, speed and altitude help information at the top there, I think. Get this thing trimmed a bit. Raise the landing gear. Raise the flaps. Oh, there, yeah, I take it from that. Or not. Something's not quite right. Maybe I took maybe we took the wrong runway. I don't know. Fuck it, we're in the air though. Yeah, the AI wants to take us back down. 
<laughs> what on earth? Ugh. You know, you test this game for like two hours the day before and everything's fine. And as soon as you stream it, that's when this bullshit happens. Maybe they wanted to go to... Here, look, look, look. This is what I think's happened. I think they wanted just to go to this runway, maybe? Alright, listen then. I guess I'll let the AI do the taxing in future. It'd be shame. It's a shame it doesn't tell you where you're supposed to go, I guess, but never mind. Actually, no, I think it does. I think there's a button you can press now that I recall. Oh, I forgot about that. Although, see, look, now this guy, he's going the other way now. So is this one. You know what? You'll need to fly it again. That's fine by me, trust me. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hit the, the mission start shortcut. There you go. And uh, nice thing about this game is it has time compression, so... Off we go. Where were we supposed to go? I want to find out. I want to see. Where were we meant to go? What was the actual plan? Also, I want to see if this works. Hold on. If we go back to regular speed. If you press the H button, it gives you help. Like how to stay in formation, stuff like that. And it looks like... Yeah, okay. It wants us to go this way. Well, I'll let the AI handle it from here. Did it save my adjusted flight path? Do you know what? It probably didn't. That's okay. We'll do it when we're in the air. Thing is, we'll spend like an hour circling the airfield, waiting for all the bombers to form up, so we've got plenty of time. Don't worry about it. I just want to get us off the ground for now. So I'm going to assume we're taking off this way, are we? Yes, no? No, apparently. Maybe this one? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, I will have to do the flight pattern again. That's okay. Now where are we off to? Oh, we're going all the way to the end. Fair enough. It's a bit of a shame that the game just won't, won't just account for the fact that you're in the air. That if you don't take off the correct runway, it wrecks everything, that, which is quite hilarious. But then again, maybe I'm expecting a bit much from a game that's 21 years old. Okay, this is clearly the runway we want. Yeah, this is this is it. Right. You I are cleared for takeoff. Brilliant, there we go. That's the message we didn't get last time because we were very much not cleared for takeoff. <laughs> okay. Same procedure as before. Roll forwards a bit. Lock the tail wheel. Put the parking brake on. Make sure my joystick's actually working, which I believe it is. There we go. All the control services work. You are cleared for takeoff. Alright, no, 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 hold on there, game. I want to do that, thank you very much. Right. I shall do the honours, thank you. Alright. Second time's the charm, everyone. We're watching you. Lettuce, thank you very much for the 11 months of subage. Oops. Uh, release the parking brake. There we go. <laughs> I didn't put I didn't put the flaps down, but uh, I guess we didn't need to. Right, up goes the gear. Pull the thralls back just a smidge. Get the 
plane trimmed out for the climb. Beautiful. Join formation. I believe it wants us to go over here. See, there's a little little floating box over there. That's um, that's where we need to be. I'll let the AI take over in a second though, because I don't want to sit here f f flying around in a circle for an hour in real time. Battle of Britain is now on YouTube to watch for free. You're kidding! Really? That's awesome. I'll probably watch that later. I love that film. Do you check the flight path? I will do in a second, don't worry. I just want to see if I can catch up to this box. <laughs> Damn you, box! Come back here! What I really wish is that my joystick hat switch would work. It would make looking around in the cockpit a bit easier. As it stands, I have to use the numpad keys because for some reason my uh, the hat switch on my joystick here just doesn't work. Don't really know why. Game just doesn't want to recognize that it exists. You link Battle Britain in the Discord. Legend. Nice one. Has a very quotable line in it that film, which was very very applicable to today. Which is, uh, you could teach monkeys to fly better than that. It used to be one of my it used to be my old subscriber um, Twitch alert noise. The uploader has not made this video available in your country. Sorry, Romania. That's where the alert's from. Yeah, it's from that film. You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. Where have you been? Learning to swim. <laughs> I love that film. That was the clip. There was a clip of the spit bouncing, bouncing multiple times as well. Yes, exactly. There's a new pilot that's trying to land, he bounces it a bunch of times, and that's when the two guys turn to each other and say, You can teach monkeys to fly better than that. It's such a good movie. It's got Christopher Plummer in it. It's one of the main characters, who you might know as Arngear from Skyrim. He's also in The Sound of Music and a bunch of other famous stuff, but you nerds will probably know him as Arngear from Skyrim. And Knives Out, yes, good point, actually. He was great in that. R.I.P. Christopher Plummer, he was cool. One of my favourite actors. Also has Laurence Olivier, yes, he plays Hugh Dowding in the film as well. It's a really star-studded cast, actually. There's tons of famous people in it. Michael Caine's in it. Um, loads of people. Yep, Michael Caine's on it. He, I think he. I think at one point he's the one that goes. We now you you got to make a decision. We either stand down or blow up. Which is it going to be? Because they're all stood out on the uh, on the runway with their engines running, and the Spitfires are going to overheat if they stick around any longer. And uh, yeah, it's a really good film. It's a really good film. S small spoilers, actually, really. Um, most of the big characters die. It's one of the things I like about the film, actually. It doesn't make any distinctions between the sort of big, fancy actor characters and the other people. People die because war is unfair. Alright. Hey, I, you've got it from here. There we go. Close enough. Ah, oh, look. One of the bombers has already joined us. Which is, the, what's the nose art on that one? Let's have a look. Uh, if we go inside, we head over to one of our waste gunners. Here we go. Let's have a look. I can't see. What nose art is that? I'm not sure. Oh, it's the, it's the guy, it's the pimp guy. It's the guy with the pimp cane and the hat.
Can I turn this box off now? There we go. It's the merchant, yes. There we go. I don't know what the actual name of the bomber is, but it'll have a name. If we were playing a squadron campaign, you'd be able to see it in the uh, documents and stuff. I think if I do tackle this on YouTube, I probably will do a squadron campaign, because it just seems to have more interesting content available. More stuff to do. But yeah, that's number three pulling up behind us there. So we'll end up circling like this until like all 18 or so bombers have formed up, which will take a little while. So that gives us plenty of time to head on over to the uh, Dr. Fat's navigator position. This, by the way, this this gadget here, this new hickey, this is the uh, the drift calculator. Calculates how much drift the bomber currently has by basically you observe what's going past you on the ground and then you line up the dotted lines. Look, here you go like this. To try and calculate, you know, make, make the dotted lines move with the terrain. And then you can calculate how much drift the plane has, which is useful for bomb aiming. So, uh, in instrument view, see, that's 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 it down there, I think. Um, map view, and the icons got a bit crazy there for our plane right now because we're not actually on the waypoint list. It's it does that when you're circling for some reason. So let's take AI control away. Uh, let's get rid of that in the top left. We don't need that right now. Let's uh, get editing. Let's see. So, this we want to move over here. Our decision point. That goes there. And then these go. Here. Roughly thereabouts. Yep. Same with you. Drag that back slightly, perhaps. Uh, there is okay, actually. That's fine. And then the rally point will stick out here. And then we'll add another waypoint here to make that turn a little bit less funky. Make sure it's at the correct altitude. Which for us is 15,000 today. And then we can move this like that. Boosh, bish, bash, bosh. We should be able to hit the target more accurately now uh, with less collateral damage and we'll save some fuel to boot. What's the second arrow for the approach points? This one up here, right? So this is the approach point, I believe. I'm not totally sure, but I believe if we basically we go over the target and for some reason we can't see it properly, like there's cloud in the way, and we basically have to go around and try again, I think what happens is we'll fly back to this approach point here, and that's when we try it again, essentially. So if you if you need to have another go, um, the approach point there, I think, is where we start the second time. But don't quote me on that. I actually don't really know, but that's just my best guess. Is this a one-to-one -one scale map? I believe it is, yeah. Right. Let's go, why don't we have a look at the tail gunner view? There we go. You can see everybody forming up. Go to the top gunner. Now, you control the turrets and stuff like that with your joystick and not your mouse, oddly enough. Um, presumably because it's a little bit more realistic. It does mean that the gunnery is harder than it would be if you were using a mouse. Hey, General Still. Of 
warming up nicely now. Excellent. We're watching you. Zimbuk2, hello! Five tier one subs. From Pudorov, there we go. Okay, well, Zimbuk2, stabilizer motion. Big G Freeman, fat blasted. And Qu Queen Kitty Monster, enjoy your, enjoy your emojis. That's very generous. I'm really liking this impromptu uh, the stream layout we made, by the way, with the cloud background and the Twitch chat over on the right side. If I do so so myself, I'm quite I'm quite pleased with that. Considering I had to come up with it in a hurry on the fly, on the fly. Yeah, good pun not intended. I do apologise. We're watching you, Scott. <laughs> Uh, let's see. What? There's there's a bunch of keyboard shortcuts here. I can't remember what they are, though. Okay, here's They're the here's the nose gun. Scum. Nose gun slash bombardier's position. Is the ammo for the guns limited? Yes, it is, actually. If I hit I here when I'm on one of the guns, uh, we have 2,000 rounds for this gun. I believe all the guns have 2,000 rounds except for uh, the cheek gun has 1,000 rounds, I think, and one of the others also only has 1,000. I forget which, though. I think it's the waist guns. They only have 1,000, if I recall. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, the waist guns only have 1,000 as well. an ancient flight sim slash dog flight simulator. So basically it's it's B17's kind of part flight sim part management game because it's really about it's less about actual physical flying of an aeroplane and more about managing the crew of your B17 and making making sure they survive their missions. 99% of the time, we're going to have the AI actually flying the plane for us, and I'll be doing other things like aiming the bombs or firing the gun turrets and stuff. Or telling the crew to put our fires out or do first aid and stuff like that. How many bombers have we got formed up right now? It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12. I guess we're waiting on the remaining six. Yeah, so the, 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 it's a very similar concept to Bomber Crew, but obviously it's far more realistic, basically. And in this game, you can technically fly, fly, fly fighters if you want to as well, um, but I don't really know why you would. It's, it's sort of... feels like a bit of an afterthought, really. There are better games out there if you want to fly fighters. The movie Memphis Bell when his tomato super thermos blows up is also a classic scene. Yeah, that was a good movie. I enjoyed that. I haven't watched it in ages. Barber Crew isn't realistic. <laughs> Barber Crew is fun. Don't get me wrong. I do enjoy Barber Crew a lot. But uh it's it's it, it's a bit more it's a bit it's less flights and more FTL. In, in its heart. Game looks great for being 20 years old. Yeah, it's not bad, is it, really? It could certainly be worse. Anyway, nothing much is really going to happen here until we all the bombers have formed up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the enter button. So there's two ways you can do this, basically. We could put on time compression and then just watch like this. Alternatively... If I hit the enter key, what it'll do is it'll skip to the next event in the mission, and it'll be interrupted in case if anything goes wrong. So if I hit enter, we should now have everybody formed up. Smoke coming from the engines there, that's not good. That's. I think there's a little glitch in the game where if you go full throttle, smoke comes out of the engines. And I, I, I guess maybe it's supposed to represent, like... Um exhaust from the engines 
but it looks a bit too much for just exhaust, if you ask me. They do look like they need to land, don't they? They look like they're on bloody fire, is what they look like. It's, it's a bit much. Now, there is some occasional weirdness in the game. Like, I've seen previously, like, our fighter escort escort us all the way back to England and then just mysteriously crash into the ground. <laughs> like, there is some definite, you know, head-scratching moments occasionally with the AI in this game. But, you know, it's doing a lot for a game from 2000. Lads, turn off the smoke generators, yeah. So now, if we head back inside and we go to the... Whichever the navigator's view is. It's one of these bloody things. It's one. There we go. We are now on, on, on course. We're on the green line here. And it luckily, all the way through, it is a green line. Which means that we do have enough fuel. If the, if the line were to turn orange at some point, that means that we wouldn't have enough fuel to finish the mission. So, I'm just going to hit enter again. Where does that put us now? That has put us, we skipped ahead a bit more, entered, skip ahead a bit more, time skip hold, a formation of fighters is scrambling. I imagine that might be our escorts. Let's have a look. Yep, it is. It's the P-38s and the P-47s. These are our fighter escorts for today. They won't really be needed because there won't, they, they shouldn't be any Luftwaffe fighters today. We're out of range of any of their main air bases, so. But they are coming along anyway for insurance, I guess. We're high enough now, apparently, that contrails are starting to form. Which makes sense because we are in December, apparently, according to the date of the game, so it should be quite cold up here. Even at like 15,000 feet and slightly below. I believe when you're the navigator, you have a window view as well. Yep, there we go. Got a little window we can look out of. Throw off of moral support, yeah. Basically, this run here to... You always get this at the start of this campaign. And the run to rest here is basically a milk run. It's deliberately set up that way so that it, your first mission is relatively easy. Um, because there's no fighters, there's a little bit of flak, and that's kind of it, really. Nice, easy target to see and to hit. The weather's good. Um, the game's deliberately throwing us a bone with the first mission. It'll get much more difficult later on when we actually start heading over to Germany. And Hamburg over here somewhere. Yeah, places like this. Bremen. Hamburg. There's Berlin. There's Berlin, I think. Lots of targets here, look at this. Marienfeld Aero Engine Works, Maybach Industrial Facility, Telefunken Lorenz Tempelhof, the Kriegsmarine Headquarters. OKW Army Headquarters in Berlin. So one of the fun things about the Squadron campaign, which I've never tried, but I'd love to one day, but when you're doing the Squadron campaign and you take on the role of Squadron Commander, you plan the missions yourself. You don't just take what you're given, you plan them yourself. So basically, you get to look at the map and think, right, there's a ball bearing factory right there, I think we need to bomb that, and then you plan out the whole mission yourself to bomb that particular factory. It's, it's, it's pretty cool, honestly. It's kind of a sandbox in that respect. Right, let's do another time skip. Which brings us to here. 
Another time skip. We should be over Bournemouth now if we go to the external view. Yep. There's Bournemouth down there. Our cow flaps are doing some strange stuff at the moment. That's better. There we go. <laughs> Cow flaps were actually flapping. So try and make us go faster? I don't know. <laughs> That's not how cow flaps work. Yeah, with the time skip function and the time compression, you can really take this game at kind of whatever pace you like. You can let the AI manage however much of it you like. You can micromanage it as much or as little as you want. It's cool. And the AI is pretty competent, as I said. I mean, it has to be, ultimately, because the same AI that's running our plane is running all these other ones, too. So the other planes will have their own little crises to deal with. They'll have injured crew members and fires breaking out and mechanical failures and all sorts of stuff going on in their planes too, so. Top Gunner's having fun going round and round, yeah. <laughs> I think the Belly Gunner does it too. Yep. Scanning for targets. Do you have to fly 17s all the time? Unfortunately, yes. I mean, the game the name of the game was ultimately B-17 Flying Fortress. Um, but, uh, yeah. I the, like, As has been mentioned, there's there's apparently, supposedly, a remake of this game in the works. With VR support and fancy new graphics and stuff. And I, if I heard correctly, I think that game... Or there is possibly another game that's very similar also that's in the works... But either one or the other, or whichever one it is, I believe they want to add the B-24 Liberator to it as well. So you can fly a B-24s if you want to. Um, and I, I know one of them wants to add Lancasters too. And that would be really cool. Night bombing. A I, I, I sim like this, but for night bombing in a Lancaster would be really interesting. Remake is Microprose that's adding the B24 and Lancaster. Right, there you go, yeah. So if that actually, you know, becomes a reality instead of just a bunch of uh, concept art on a website, that would be super awesome. Night bombing wasn't really in a formation, was it? No, it was in a bomber stream, uh, effectively. So what happened was, I think the basic gist of it was the, the bombers would take off and then they would act as their own independent... Uh, aircraft for the duration of the mission. They'd go up, they'd take off, they'd go off on their assigned course, they'd do their bombing, aiming themselves, drop their bombs and then go home. And it would be a stream of bombers all doing that right through the night. So then to the Discord. Um, if you're a Twitch sub, I think if you just go into Discord and you, like, um, set up your connection with Twitch... Uh, in your user settings, your connections, and set it up. I think hopefully you should get an invite to the server. If you don't, let me know. Now, by contrast here with the Americans, we're doing daytime bombing, and basically the whole formation is going to bomb on the lead. So essentially, I'm gonna—I'm the lead bomber, so I'll be doing the bomb aiming, and when I drop my bombs, everyone else will just drop theirs at the same time. And uh, therefore, the bombs will still all more or less be on target with a bit of a spread between us like this. So we fly as a formation, we drop all our bombs at the same time, and then we fuck off. Anyway, Pilot and navigator. Okay, turn coming up. skip the head. We are part of the way across the channel. To whoa! Oops, I hit the. 
I instinctively press M for map sometimes, even even though that's really not what you want to press at all. Because uh, that turns the AI off. We're at the waypoint, okay. So we are... Ah, we're here. So our next waypoint is going to be the decision point, where we have to decide which target we're going to go for. And as far as I'm aware, uh, there's no reason we shouldn't go for the primary, honestly. So I think we'll do just that. I believe... If we head on over to the radio operator... We can't do it yet. We can change the formation altitude if we want to. But, um, and we can leave the formation and return to base. But, um, I think when we get close to the decision point, we can actually request a weather forecast for the targets. And that will help us decide, you know, which one we want to go for. Because if one of your targets is covered in cloud, then obviously you're probably going to want to go for your secondary instead. Because if there's cloud, you're not going to be able to see the target to be able to aim your bombs at it. Bridge Too Far is a fantastic film as well, yeah. Love Bridge Too Far. You see the shadows of our planes on the ground there. Uh, let's just go ahead and use time compression, maybe? Actually, no, that'll, wait, that'll take way too long. Time skip. Time skip. Time skip. Here we go. Back outside, and we're approaching France. Well, yeah, I agree, Justine. You know, I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that old war movies didn't have CGI. So... The effects are all practical, which makes a big difference. I mean, in the in the in the in the movie Battle of Britain, they literally blow up an original World War II hangar in that film with actual explosives. I mean, that's authentic as fuck, right? <laughs> French coast down there. French coast down there. Yep. Thanks, Navigator. Would never have guessed. It's reassuring that it is indeed the French coast, because if that was like the Dutch coast, we'd be in some serious trouble right now. But yeah, Battle of Britain, Bridge Too Far, Tora Tora Tora. The Longest Day was pretty good, actually. That's an old one. Um, what else? What other good war movies from that era are there? Yeah, if that was the Irish coast, we'd be in serious trouble. <laughs> Dam Busters, yep, 633 Squadron. Yep, both excellent. Great Escape. Specifically, uh, Dr. Fat, specifically war movies from, like, the 60s and 70s. Patton, that's another good one. Ice Cold and Alex, that's another fantastic one. I love that film. Where Eagles Dare, yeah, that's good fun. Uh, one with Mark Hamill in it, set in Italy. Yeah, was it the, was it the Big Red One or something? I know the one you mean. I don't think I've ever actually seen it, but I know the one you mean. War movies when the military advisors were actually in World War Two. Well, yes, exactly. Um, for example. One of the, it's one of my favorite like Easter eggs about a film, like nuggets of information I know about a film ever. But in Battle of Britain, a couple of interesting things to note about that film. One is that when they assembled all the aircraft for filming Battle of Britain, it technically, if you considered it the, the, the film crew to be a country, they had one of the world's largest air forces technically. 
because of the sheer number of planes they had for that film. Um, additionally, what was really interesting about it is that a lot of the fighter planes in the movie are flown by people who flew in the actual battle. So people like Adolf Galland on the German side, he was a World War II fighter pilot who flew for the Germans in the Battle of Britain, and he flies some of the aircraft in the movie too. So that's pretty cool. Well, yeah, when they're crediting the parts from Israel at the end of the film, they're obviously crediting pilots who later went on to become citizens of Israel after the war, you know. That's, that's, that's obviously what it means. But yes, um, Israel was, it was indeed not formed until 1948. Basically crediting the Jewish pilots, yeah, I guess. Letters from Iwo Jima was a very, very good um, war film, yeah. It's a modern one, but it's, it is very, very good. Bridge on the River Kwai. That's the other one I was thinking of. How could I forget? Old Alec Guinness doing his thing. Oh yeah, Band of Brothers, yeah. Band of Brothers is awesome. Bloody fantastic. Yes, yes, yes. I um, I know the one you're thinking of, Kit Fox. Yeah. They get they get a different character in the film to say the line, because he refused to let the fictional version of himself say it because he didn't say it in real life. Yeah. It was a very good line though. <laughs> das Boot, of course, yes. This boot is all, all, all also a fantastic movie. Yeah, absolutely recommend it. I have the like gigantic four-hour version of it uh, on on uh, DVD somewhere. The extended edition is way too damn long. I mean, yeah, you've got to treat it like you're watching a mini series, really. Hell of a movie, though. Yes, yes, this is when the German comes across the bridge to the surrounded British paratroopers and says, We wish to discuss terms of surrender. And he replies back, I'm sorry, but we just don't have room to take you all prisoner. Right. Oh, here we go decision point coming up. Can we now... No, we can't request target information for some reason. Don't really know why. Maybe just not on this particular mission. I don't know. 
That's one for the manual. This game does come with a pretty hefty manual, so as I'm sure you can imagine. Maybe it's only after we pass the decision point we get to have the weather info. We're watching you, scum. Pilot navigator, the waypoint. There you go. So does that mean... Thunair as well, thank you for seven months of subage. Is Dave bombing on screen? But um tish. Uh, radio operator. Here we go. Primary target weather report. Oh, I gotta take AI control off first. Weather at primary target is believed to be cloudy with a tenth cloud at approximately 6,000 feet. Ooh, that is very cloudy actually. How about the secondary? Weather at secondary target is believed to be cloudy with 6 tenths cloud at approximately 6,000 feet. A bit less cloudy, but I think we'll still go for the primary, frankly. We'll give it a bash. I mean, it's a, it's a harbour, it's a dock, so it should be quite easy to pick out in a hurry. It's not like we're going after an inland target. So, oh, I need to click leave formation then, that would have been a bad idea. Operation Petticoat. I remember that movie with Tony Curtis in it. Yeah, that's actually that's actually quite a good film. <laughs> Operation Petticoat. Uh, Mother Goose is another good one, actually. Uh, was it Cary Grant in Mother Goose? I think so. If you hear Mother Goose, you can only think of Ace Combat. <laughs> I recommend Mother Goose, actually. It's a really, really, really uh, good film. It's quite light-hearted. Quite fun. So it's almost a comedy, really. Oh, it's Father Goose. You're right. It's Father Goose. I'm sorry. I'm a dumbass. Yeah, that's the whole joke. Father Goose, right? Yeah. God damn it. Thanks, Dupree. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't watched it in like 10 years in my defense, but yes, that's the one. Yeah, Father Goose, is, that's, that's a 10 out of 10 film. Do recommend. Uh, you could also fly under the clouds. I'm not. I don't. I'm not dropping down to six thousand feet with flak around. That's a good way to get horribly killed. We're just gonna have to hope we get some good gaps in the cloud. managed to dodge all the flak so far, which I was hoping we would do. That's good at least. I was hoping we could, we're threading the needle a little close here. Next to this flak, this ring of flak here, but uh, I think we're managing to get just outside it. Judging by the little shadow on the, on the map there. Oh, excuse me. 
Great Escape, A Bridge Too Far, and Battle for Britain. Uh, yeah, I mean... Those are three pretty amazing, excellent movies. I can't, I can't fault your decision there at all. There are three really good ones. Oddly enough, three films that don't have very happy endings, actually. Now you mention it. That's th three movies with quite bittersweet endings. Sink the Bismarck. No, that's a classic, yeah. Okay. Should be about to turn onto the bombing run in a second. Okay, so now the pl control of the plane goes over to the bombardier's autopilot. Bomb doors open. The flak's starting. Head over to the bombardier's view. This is the inside the uh, inside of the bomb, the Norden bomb site. And this might be a bit loud, folks, but not much I can do about that. It's flak; it's meant to be loud. Uh, instrument view. Window view. Resting ahead of us, about to fly straight into that. Okay. Yeah, that is a lot of cloud. This might not go so well. Should be roughly down there where the the site is currently pointed, but oh boy, the weather's looking a bit grim. So much for a milk run, huh? So basically, the the bomb, the, the yeah, the other bombers in the formation, they will bomb on me. So basically, that means when the, I'm the lead plane. When I drop my bombs, everybody else in the formation does as well, which is what they did in real life. It doesn't make much sense to have everybody individually aiming at the target when you can just have the guy in front do it and then have everybody just drop their bombs when he says go. All right, okay, we can see something down there. If only I could bloody remember what the... Uh, uh, okay, yeah, no, I can kind of see it. Right, let's take away man... Let's take manual control here. And let's go search mode. So we move the bomb site over the target there, and then lock it on. And now we just got to correct for drift, basically, which is difficult to do when you can't really see it properly. But this might have been easier if we'd come in the opposite direction. In truth, actually, but oh well, it's, it's a little bit over to the left here. Try and get a slap bang in the middle, like there. There we go. Right. So now what we're going to try and do is stop the, the crosshairs on the target here. They'll drift left and right, up and down. And i got to basically try and correct for that as best as I can. And make sure the crosshairs don't move too much in order for us to get an accurate drop. Which is easier said than done, obviously. Put 
that's not too much drift now. So, okay, it's going back to the left now. Let's try and correct that a bit. There you go. I'm basically using the joystick to do this. Okay, someone might have just gotten injured or just panicked a bit. Luckily, the bomb site doesn't seem to be drifting too far up and down. Just it over so slightly back that way. Just got a lot of left drift at the moment. Alright, this is probably about as good as it's going to get. When these two markers line up here, the bombs will go. Hopefully we should do okay. We'll find out, though. And there he goes. Uh, if we look outside, as you can see, we got a few holes in this here and there. Low, low resolution damage, but it's damage, all right. That's some definite holes. This is why we didn't want to go any lower than 15,000 feet. Uh, if you look around in the plane, yep, there's damage. Dr. Fat's window has been destroyed, it looks like. Big old hole in his window, look at that, how rude. Uh, let's have a look at our status. We've got David Crumpington, Dr. Fat, and Tom East are all panicked slightly. They're all a bit spooked, that's what this little face symbol means on them. up in the flight deck. Yep, yep. Some shrapnel came right through old Crumper's window on the left there. That's why he's spooked. Um, everything's fine in here. The waist, on the other hand, is slightly perforated. The tail's okay. And we're out of the flak, it looks like. Thank goodness. Did we hit? Well, it would have been difficult to see on account of all the cloud, but we'll find out when we get home, basically. Otherwise, what I might have done is gone in the belly turret and had a look down. But hopefully we hit. We'll find out when we get home. There'll be a... So when, you, when we get back to base, we'll get a debriefing. And we'll go through the debriefing documents. And it'll give us a, a little chart showing us how accurate the bombs were, where the bombs hit on the target. And there'll also be a post-raid reconnaissance film we can watch. Which will actually allow us to see the damage we've inflicted. Which is pretty cool as well. So now we just want to head home, basically. And hopefully, everyone should be fine. I don't see any of the bombers with any crazy damage. There's no smoking engines and stuff, so we should be okay. The B-17 was a legendarily tough aeroplane at the end of the day. Um, and that's re reflected in the game quite nicely. Like, it takes a lot to bring one of these things down. It's certainly far from impossible, though. There might be some injuries... We'll have to keep an eye on the crew as we head back, because um, injuries don't always show up immediately. Um, basically, it'll take a little bit of time, and someone basically will finally notice, oh shit, I've got a bit of shrapnel in me, that's not good. Yeah, there's a whole after-action report type thing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Well, goodbye, France. Uh, there's a bit of a, a bit of damage on that engine there. I mean, hopefully it's just superficial. But I'm sure we'll find out one way or the other. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if all Crumpers and Dr. Fat and maybe Tom as well come up with the injuries later. We'll see. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little surprised considering the state of the underneath of the aircraft that the bomb doors closed, because obviously sometimes the bomb doors can get damaged by shrapnel, and then they'll be stuck open, and you have to send somebody to go winch a crank inside the aircraft and manually crank the, the doors closed again. Um, 
One thing that might happen is one of our landing gear wheels might have been damaged, in which case, again, when we get home, we'll have to send somebody to crank the gear down. But no way to know until, until then, really. holes in the wings. Yeah, just a few. Some of us have it worse. Look at that guy up there. You can see daylight through bits of his tail. You can land on your turret. I will endeavour to remember to get you out of the turret before we belly flop it. Yep. <laughs> oh, hello. That was a boom. That was probably the escort fighters dropping their drop tanks. I imagine is what that explosion was. All right, let's go ahead and time skip. So we've come basically out that way and we're now turning, circling around. If I head on over to the navigators view, we are now, yep, we're on our way home. From navigator. The French coast down there. Yes, I'm aware, Navigator. I'm aware, Dr. Fat. We just bombed it. <laughs> Alright, time skip. Time skip. Time skip. Okay, we got somebody who's injured. Yep, it's, yep, it's all Crumpers himself. Alright, so. What we gotta do is let's go to Mr. Top Gunner Man. It's a good compartment view. You, Crooked Shades, I think it was. We need you to go and administer first aid. I have seen, I, I, I do remember an incident when I played this many, many years ago where both my pilots got injured. <laughs> that was a very exciting event, shall we say. Both pilots were out of commission at the same time. <laughs> I had to get the bombardier to basically take over for a minute while we got them patched up. Right. Uh... Crumpington's still a little spooked, but he's okay. All right, see you, JB. Okay, another time skip. Another time skip. Do you know it'd be? Well, you know what'd be really fun? It'd be to get a. Uh, an AFX B-17. I mean, I've got one up on my shelf. Up there, a really old one I used to have. From when I was a kid. It's all broken because a cat knocked it off a table, but I'd like to get another one and paint it up just like the one in the game here. That'd be kind of fun. Hungry Hector. Don't want to cause a panic, but does anyone know on board know how to fly a plane? Yeah. <laughs> It is probably worth going through the crew uh, manifest when we get back to base and actually making a note, mental note of who does actually have piloting skill in case that does happen. <laughs> Time skip. How's the crew doing? We're all fine. Whoa, okay, okay. Okay. All right. Humphrey's in a bit of a state, but luckily Spaghetti's already on the job. That's okay. I forget what is Spaghetti. Our, Spaghetti's our radio operator, right? Yeah, he is. Hey, 
Both our pilots are absolute drama queens. <laughs> Alright, we're good now. Nobody's spooked. Um, Hobo Joe still has googly eyes, but uh, that's fine. That's normal. He, he normally looks like that. It's fine. Time skip. Actually, let's have a little look at uh, where we are on the the old map. All right, we're nearly home. Really, we are just a little bit south of Swindon, southeast of Bath and Bristol. We'll fly over Oxford, and then we'll be back to Poddington for some beers and donuts, I guess. Skip. Oh, an aircraft is leaving a formation. Hmm. Who's leaving? Ah, uh, looks like the fighters are leaving. Our little friends are uh, are going home. All right, cool. Aircraft is information, it's probably the P-38's leaving now, I imagine. I oh, know, still there, I'm leaving, okay. Alright, skip ahead, skip ahead. Aircraft are landing. Would that be us? It is us. Alright. So who goes first? I think it would ordinarily be us, but it probably depends on who's got the most damage. So, it's looking a bit like this guy's gonna go first, okay. We're watching you. This guy, and uh, looks like us, we're dropping out of formation next. Bobo Joe! You've been gifted a sub by Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Orbit and wait for landing clearance. It's USAAF plane. Coffee and some type of fried food. <laughs> Beer isn't allowed on duty, okay. Let me turn on the, uh, the info in the top left. Just head on down. Can we see Poddington from here? Probably a big cloud in the way. Where is it? Oh, it's just behind us, actually. Okay. I'll let the AI basically fly the approach and I'll take over when we're on final, I think, and try and land it myself. Do you ever fly over Italy or is it always 8th uh, Air Force in England? It's always 8th Air Force in England, unfortunately. The game really deserved to have a few expansions, I think, that allowed you to do stuff like that, like fly in Italy. If you ask me, but... And maybe fly a B-24. That would be good. But uh, it just never happened back in the day, sadly. As in, they never made an expansion. There's Poddington. Now downloading the Commandos 2 HD remaster for your World War fix, thanks to this stream. <laughs> nice. Hopefully the remake will expand on it. Yeah, apparently apparently they, they, they plan to. We'll see whether or not that actually happens, but apparently that's the plan, yeah.
I can see them certainly managing like to put a B24 in the game. Doing the Lancaster as well seems very ambitious, but we shall see. There's a chap up in front. Ah, there's another one over there. He's actually smoking. Although that's probably just because, yeah, it's, it's the weird glitch with the uh, engine exhaust. Don't know who's going to land first. I guess probably not us since we're not at the front, but I could be wrong actually. Everyone's coming down now. Why would be Lancaster be so ambitious to add? Well, just because, um, you know, um, loads of different models and textures to add for one thing, different voice acting for the crew members you'd have to do. Um, and also you'd have to model all the night bombing stuff instead of daytime bombing, so the whole bomber stream thing, uh, the radio navigation, uh, searchlights, uh, Luftwaffe night fighters, loads of stuff you'd have to do that's very different from, from this. It would be interesting to do though, for sure. In some ways, it would be almost more action-packed actually, because you'd have to be, you'd have to do things like uh, corkscrew to get out of searchlights and uh, lots of fancy, you know high-G maneuver of piloting stuff. Because Lancasters didn't really, they didn't have the protection of a formation of, of bombers with lots of guns on them, so they had to do a lot more maneuvering to get away from enemy fighters and enemy flak and stuff. Yeah, I think we're just circling for now. I imagine someone else might be landing first. We'll see. Just speed it up a bit, see how we get on. Yeah, we're just orbiting the field right now. Don't pay too much attention to the black smoke, it's a glitch. As you can see, it's it's going on and off. I'll just do a time skip, see what that happens. No, no, you can't do it. Aircraft are landing. All right. Just keep going with the time skip then. I mean, the, the, the time compression, even. On base for the use of first class passengers only. <laughs> well, I wonder, hold on, let's uh, scooch on over to the radio operator's view just in case there isn't like a land now command. No, it doesn't look like it. Landing at 11.59. I'd say maybe it wants us to go first manually, but I don't think that's how that works. I feel like the AI should be perfectly capable of landing by itself, so I'm just going to... In the interest of not fucking it up like we did in that first attempt at the takeoff, I'm just going to let it go and see what happens. There we go. There we go. Just as soon as I said it. Okay. Looks like the flaps are coming out. Are there people still on the runway? I'm seeing little black dots on the runway. I'll be honest. I'm not totally confident in the safety of this operation. <laughs> I 
I'm going to take manual control here. Right, the gear's coming down without having to crank it. That's good news, at least. I actually don't really know what the stall speed of a B-17 is off the top of my head, so... I'm kind of winging it right now, pun not intended. Right, I think we're down. There's probably a bit of a clunk in the process, but we're down. Let the AI take it from here. All right, cool. We're back. No real dramas, just a couple of slightly injured pilots. And a few superficial holes, no mechanical issues. It's a shame there isn't a replay mode. I'd love to be able to go back and see what the landing looked like from the outside, but I'd probably be horrified in fairness, so. <laughs> we didn't die, I know, right? <laughs> That's Dr. Fat's ever so slightly smashed window. You like the breeze. It's air conditioning. <laughs> We're watching you, scum. Oh, thank you very much for those gift subs. Everyone's being very generous today. I'm slightly flattered. We're watching you, scum. Which one of these is our uh, We're hard stand, you. I wonder? Ours is maybe a bit further down there, I'm not sure. Speed it up a bit. Okay, we're going around here. Slightly onto the grass. We're watching. Don't mind that. Here we go. This is this is home, Stop. looks like. Right next to the Nissan huts, perfect. Don't have a very long walk. I can see why we've reserved this parking space. <laughs> Stop engines, there we go. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. I shall take over. I will do that, thanks. I will park. I could park this a bit bloody better than you, actually, as well, while we're at it, AI. Thanks very much. There we go. Now the whole bomber is on the tarmac. Push a little further forward. There we go. Very nice. Right, and now we will select engine one. Turn it off. I've seen B-17s flying in real life. I've seen Sally B flying at Duxford and stuff. And they always seem to turn off the outboard engines first. And they also turn in, turn on the inboard engines first as well. And I don't know why that is, but that seems to be what they always do. So, so if we go set engine four, turn that off as well. Close left, close right. Make sure idle, cut off. 
Now again, we could go in the cockpit and actually flick all the switches and levers to do this ourselves if we wanted to, but I ain't got time for that. I'd have to read the manual. success we have arrived we are home there we go so this was the route map we took in the end our slightly revised version did it pay off in the end though is the question did we actually destroy the target mission debriefing Mission date. Target attack, Brest Harbor. Distance flown, 834 miles. Bombers lost slash missing, zero. Enemy fighter shot down, zero. Bomb damage estimate, high. That's okay. Not totally destroyed, but it's high. So I'll take that, I guess. Considering the cloud situation. Uh, okay. No enemy kills, no friendly losses. Uh, Crumpington took a medium wound and Kuzland a flesh wound. So I suspect Humphrey will be back in action immediately. Crumpington might have to take some time off at the hospital. Eat an ice cream, chatting up the nurses, etc. Bomb damage assessment. So, yeah, our bombs went across the target like that. And these red dots are all the things that we destroyed. So bearing in mind, this is just our plane's bombs, because the rest of the formation will have dropped bombs all the way across like this as well. So... Looks like we did a fairly good job. Um, sorry, oops. I think I missed a page. Commanding officer summary. Promotions awarded none. Medals awarded. Crumpington and Humphrey both got purple hearts. Missing crews accounted for none. And then we got the post-mission reconnaissance film. Took nearly three hours to do that run. Well, we did have a lot of setup to do. Have a look. What a cloud even on the recon run, to be fair. But there it is. Can't... Ugh. Really, guys? Really? This is the best reconnaissance film you could get us? <laughs> it's hopeless! Let's have another look at that. Hold on. You can't really see much, can you? Suffice to say, we did a pretty good job, though, I think. We missed that big building, it looks like, which is a bit of a shame. If we'd got that, we might have gotten a totally destroyed result. But it looks like most of the other stuff was trashed. Alright, I'll take it. Exit debrief. Bomber well, Commander's Office... Uh, let's have a look. Medical file. So, Crumpington. His morale's low and he's wounded in action. Purple heart. Uh, current injuries, a medium wound. He was sustained on the 1st. Expected discharge date is on the 15th. So he's going to be in hospital for 14 days, looks like. A couple of weeks. Discharge orders, return to aircraft or assigned to ground duties. We'll have him return to aircraft. Um, cool. It looks like the flesh wound on Humphrey didn't, didn't come to anything because it's not in the medical file. Um, might be listed in here. Let's have a look. Purple heart, injuries, flesh wound. Out from... Okay, yeah, he's out from the first until the third. So, yeah, he, he'll, he'll be out in a couple of days. Cool. So look at the intray. From 8th Air Force HQ Information Office to all commanding officers 8th Air Force. Eastern Theater News. The Russians have seized Kiev from the German 8th Corps on November the 6th. The Axis force crumbled quickly in the face of massive Soviet numerical superiority. 30 infantry divisions supported by 1,500 tanks brought the siege to a quick end. 
Pacific Theatre News, General Vandergrift's Marines have been reinforced on Bougainville. An infantry division has been landed to help the general expand his beachhead in the face of tough Japanese resistance. In addition, Admiral Halsey successfully drove the Imperial Japanese Navy from its bases on Rabaul with two large carrier-launched airstrikes. Japanese naval forces have pulled back to safer waters to lick their wounds. In addition to the attack on Tarawa Atoll, uh, was concluded after an incredibly tough struggle from the Japanese garrison. American casualties, dead and injured, are thought to be over 3,000 men, while almost all of the 4,500 Japanese Defense Force fought to the death. Army Air Force news. Combined bomber offensive. Estimates just in last month report that 19 important German towns and cities have been destroyed, 19 severely damaged, and 9 more effectively damaged. The joint report of the British Ministry of Economic Warfare and Air Ministry Intelligence Branch has estimated that 10% of Germany's total war production has been destroyed. 8th Air Force. The strategy for the 8th Air Force remains concentrated on the destruction of the Luftwaffe, as it has been since July 1943. Targets of special importance include airfields, training schools, and industry associated with aviation, such as aircraft production plants, aero engine production, ball bearing production, etc. From headquarters, 92nd Group, this is on the 4th of, se of December, um, to Commanding Officer Hungry Hector, 327th Squadron, Dear 2nd Lieutenant Crumpington, in response to your permission, reports headquarters has issued the following order. I'm passing it on to you with the Colonel's instructions to carry out as soon as possible. Sincerely, Captain Simon A. Rosenbaum, 92nd Group Staff. Declaration of Decoration. Subject, Award of the Purple Heart to 2nd Lieutenant Crumpington, 327th Squadron, 92nd Bombardment Group Heavy, 8th Air Force. By direction of the President, under provision of Army regulations as amended, you are awarded the Purple Heart in recognition for wounds taken in action in the service of the United States. Citation, 2nd Lieutenant David Crumpington, 2nd Lieutenant, isn't it? Because he's American, I keep forgetting. 327th Squadron, 9th Second World Bible Group, etc., etc., et did, or on or around the, the 1st of December 1943, in the skies above Europe, suffer an injury while engaged in combat against an armed enemy of the United States. In recognition of his suffering and the devotion to duty that it represents, his commanding officer submitted his case to the awards committee, and that committee affirms this award. And there's an identical letter for... Uh, for Humphrey, I believe. Yep. And that's the rest of the... That's all the letters. So! There we go, ladies and gents. Let's look at the bomber information file. What state are we in? Mechanical status is, is A, so they've presumably patched up all that um, superficial damage. There's a summary of our mission. Medals awarded and stuff. Cool. Let me have a little look, little look at Hungry Hector outside. Yeah, it's pretty banged up, but it's all right. A little bit worse for wear, but that's okay. He'll buff right out. Crew management file. Uh, we have vacant position here, so we'll presumably we'll get a temporary replacement, I think, to act as our pilot until Crumpington is out of the uh, is out of the hospital. Humphrey's back in though, so that's good. He wasn't out for long. Oops. Resume game. There we go. Uh, back to the airbase. And that pretty much leaves it at that, ladies and gentlemen, because that's all we've got time for today. Let's forward, new file. Uh, we'll call it uh, Twitch campaign or something. Twitch stream campaign. There we go. And that, ladies and gents, is it. It is almost 7 o'clock, 10 to 7. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead and quit. Brief flash of the desktop. Back to the intermission screen. There we go. Beautiful. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that. We can stream more of that in the future if you if anyone's interested in it. Um because I, I certainly don't mind. That's very enjoyable. And also, as I, as I said, I, I, I'd quite like to maybe have a look at a Squadron Commander campaign, because I think that could be even more interesting, frankly. Really hoping for another mission. Yeah, no, I, we, we just don't have time, unfortunately. It takes quite a while to get through one of those. 
So without, if in, in a future stream, if I stream this again, without the uh, all the technical setup nonsense I had to do at the start of the stream, we could probably get in two missions a stream, I reckon, if I did this again in the future. So, yeah, we'll see. I'll put this on YouTube. So if you have watched this on YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see more. Basically. It's quite... I, I, did, I did enjoy streaming that on Twitch, actually, because during a lot of the mission downtime, I was able to just, just sit here and talk to you guys in the chat, which was nice. So, yeah. It was a good balance of um, explosions and exciting stuff and downtime chatting with the with the peeps on, on Twitch, which I think worked for me quite nicely. Um, obviously, future missions will involve getting attacked by enemy fighters, so there'll be a lot more action, but uh, yeah. Anyway. Huh. Let's see who we can raid. Uh, who's streaming right now? Let's find out. Zamalf is streaming some Dwarf Fortress, it looks like. Perfect. From Flying Fortress to Dwarf Fortress, everybody. <laughs> okay. Slash raid. Zamalf. So head over to Zamalf. You must know him by now. I raid him frequently enough. Finnish streamer. Plays a lot of really cool games. Really chill, laid-back dude. I enjoy his streams and his YouTube content as well very, very much. He's been doing it for a long time, just like me. Uh, go say hello. So, yeah. Have a good one, everybody. I'll be back tomorrow, usual time, uh, with Tomb Raider. And then on Sunday with more Daggerfall, followed by... Well, you know, we'll see. It might be just Daggerfall. It might be Daggerfall followed by something else. We'll see. Uh, it'll be more Fighters Guild grinding, I expect, so. All right. There we go. There's the raid. Pile on over there, everybody. Have a good one. Enjoy your weekend. I certainly will enjoy mine. And I'll see you tomorrow. Toodaloo!